the Bell Witch story has been around for nearly two centuries. And while most people associate the Bell Witch with Tennessee, many don't understand that there is also a Mississippi version of the legend. You know, one of the most frequently asked questions about the Bell Witch is if this family were being tormented so mercilessly and relentlessly, why didn't they just up and move? The answer may surprise you. The Bells would talk about leaving Robertson County, Tennessee uh, to escape the entity that was causing them all these problems. But every time they would discuss it, the entity would chime in and say, you can move to the end of the world, but I'll follow you. I'll always be there. So that's why the Bells did not move out of Robertson County when the hauntings were going on. However, years after the hauntings, two of the Bells' children moved to Mississippi. And from their moves to Mississippi is where the Bell Witch of Mississippi came from. According to the Mississippi Bell Witch legend, uh, John Thomas Bell, who was the grandson of John Bell, had a daughter named Mary and he also had a farm overseer by the name of Gerald. And over time, Gerald developed a fondness for Mary, and Mary developed fondness for the overseer, Gerald. Well, John Bell got wind of this, and according to legend, he killed his farm overseer. He didn't want him having anything to do with Mary Bell. Well, shortly after the death, Mary uh, began to come down with an illness of some type, and she began talking about Gerald and how she missed him and how she loved him. And she finally reached the point where she went unconscious and remained unconscious for days. And then right before she died, she awoke briefly and announced to her parents who were at her bedside that she was going to be with Gerald. She said, I'm going to be with him. After, after Mary Bell died, they had her funeral and transported her casket to Long Creek Cemetery by a horse-drawn carriage. As the carriage made its way down Eureka Road and up to the cemetery, legend has it that a large dark bird flew circles around the carriage the entire time, ringing a bell. And the carriage, as a matter of fact, came right up this very road on which I'm standing, up here to the cemetery. And once the last piece of dirt was put on top of Mary's casket, the bird flew away. And that forms the core of the Mississippi version of the Bell Witch legend. Since then, many things are said to have happened around Panola and Yalabusha County uh, in Mississippi, many of which are attributed to the Bell Witch. Blood coming out of faucets, strange lights in the woods at night, of course your typical orbs and pictures, things like that, even people hearing their names called. So very spooky things are happening in Mississippi, and many feel that the Bell Witch did follow the Bells, or at least some of the Bells, to Mississippi and never has left the place. I'm at a cemetery outside of Batesville, Mississippi, where the graves of Jesse Bell's wife and children are located. Jesse Bell was the oldest son of John Bell, and he married Martha Gunn, daughter of Reverend Thomas Gunn. According to the legend, Martha Gunn was given stockings by none other than the Bell Witch entity, Kate, and told to be buried in the stockings. And it is said she is buried in the stockings. And her grave is just over here to my left. The top of the stone is broken, has been broken for about 10 years now. And over to my right is the grave of JMD, or James Miles Drew Bell, son of John Bell. One of the biggest questions we get about the Bell Witch cemeteries down here in Mississippi is, where is the grave of Jesse Bell? I mean, we have the grave of his wife, Martha, the graves of his children, the graves of his descendants. Where's Jesse? Well, Jesse Bell had to go to Hopkinsville, Kentucky, which is very near the old Bell home place up in Tennessee, about the year 1843. And while up there, he passed away. Some say he died of, a, of an epidemic. Others say he died in a wagon accident and Jesse Bell is not buried here, so that's why we don't find Jesse's grave here. The Bell Witch legend was not over with when John Bell died in December of 1820. The disturbances continued until the following Easter Monday of 1821, when Betsy Bell and her suitor, Joshua Gardner, picnicked along the Red River with other children as part of a church picnic. 
Kate, who had been silent about her aversion to Betsy and Joshua's relationship for some time, suddenly blurted out over and over, Betsy, don't marry Joshua Gardner. Don't marry Joshua Gardner. You'll never be happy. Well, Betsy had all she could take of this, and she broke up with Joshua, explaining to him that she was afraid Joshua would suffer the same fate as her father if they didn't break up because Kate was so strongly against Joshua. And to save Joshua from the wrath of Kate, she broke up with him. Legends have a way of working themselves out to however, however people decide to make them. As it turned out, Joshua Gardner left and went to West Tennessee to join his brother, Alfred Gardner, and start a railroad that is still in existence today. Uh, Joshua Gardner became very wealthy and at one time owned almost 20,000 acres of land and was one of the wealthiest men in West Tennessee. Meanwhile, Betsy Bell ended up marrying her school teacher, Professor Richard Powell, who had for the past several years been telling everybody what a beautiful, sweet young lady Betsy was. She married him in March, uh, March of 1824. Things went well for Betsy and Richard Powell up until 1837 when Richard Powell suffered a stroke, a very debilitating stroke. It left him paralyzed from the waist down. And his health deteriorated over the next 11 years and he died on January 13th of 1848. After Powell's death, Betsy continued to raise the family, the sons and daughters there near Cedar Hill in Robertson County, Tennessee. Their oldest son, Leftrick Reynolds Powell, died in the Battle of Franklin. She had other children, but the death of her son really took a toll on her. That, combined with obesity and diabetes and the health problems that those cause, eventually forced Betsy to leave Robertson County and move to Yalabusha County, Mississippi, with her daughter, Eliza Jane Powell, and her husband, Zadok Yelvington Zeres Bell. Betsy lived in Yalabusha County, Mississippi for about another 20 years. She died in 1888 and she is buried near Water Valley, Mississippi. This is her grave. Okay, this is the grave of Martha Gunn Bale. Yep. Okay. That's not Jesse. No, that was, who was his wife? Jesse Bell. Was that Martha? Martha Gunn. Martha Gunn. Gunn. She's the one with the busted. Still oh, there. there it goes again. Thank you so much. Yeah, his name was... ZYX? Um, Zadok Yelvington Xeris. Nobody wants to spell it out. She had nine kids. John, Sarah, Haley, yeah, James. If you can turn it on for me one more time, I'll get the camera off of you. Yes, this was the sister-in-law of JMD. Okay. And who was JMD's wife? I don't know. Is it on the back of his tomb, of this marker? No. Now, there used to be a part that would go up where the flashlight is. It went up. Oh, that's, okay. That had a lot of information, and like a lot of things around here, it suddenly disappeared. And then like a lot of things around here, it suddenly disappeared. I wish Martha's flashlight would come on. Is there anyone over by Martha's tombstone? Martha Guns? What? There's a Willie Mays buried over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. 
It yeah. looks like somebody didn't like him because it looks like they bashed it in. Or either a tree fell or a limb and it hit it just right. Thank you again. where the graves of Jesse Bell's wife and children are located. Jesse Bell was the oldest son of John Bell, and he married Martha Gunn, daughter of Reverend Thomas Gunn.